let's look at this particular question called uh, GHK coffee machine company uh, right so the requirement over here is that we need to evaluate the divisions performance one requirement second is critical discussion of the proposed measures right so whatever we have proposed we need to make a critical dis uh, discussion of the proposed measures so number two is we need to outline the criteria for designing so criteria for designing transfer price system next is we need to evaluate two methods of calculating the transfer price okay might have to do some calculations or not let's see and evaluating the potential impact of new information system on the performance management right how it will impact performance management uh, right so they might be used to the old system and we might have to provide training and everything right so that could be there there could be some kind of mzmt uh, commitment issues i'm just talking about general statement huh? so briefly describe the types of external information which the new system should capture so what type of external information should it capture right so given that uh, we are using transfer price and if we are selecting market price of course there should be some new information right external information so ghk what does it do it manufactures coffee machine in bars and cafes so basically uh, have a small coffee machines and it has been successful over the past five years and has built and maintained loyal customer base loyal customer base okay by making high quality machine backed by three years warranty okay they have a warranty as well right so there could be some kind of information required for that as well but let's see what will its implications be warranty states that GHK will recover and repair any machines that break down in the warranty period at no cost at no cost right so this is more about this gives us idea about quality as well right the repair costs quality basically we are guaranteeing quality let's just say that right additionally jhk always maintains sufficient spare parts to be able to code for a repair of any machine within the previous 10 years made within the previous 10 years okay so they maintain sufficient spare parts all right so basically there is no stock outs company mission is to maximize shareholders wealth uh, right okay the divisional structure and performance measures so it has two divisions one is manufacturing and sales next is service right the board is now considering ways to improve coordination of the activities of division for the benefit of the company as a whole so manufacturing comma sales or slash sales and service right so you as a performance management expert uh, would like to assist with this right whenever we are talking about uh, t uh, boards right so the board used tsr as an overall corporate measure of performance and roi as their main relative measure of performance between the divisions so they are using ROI and then TSR uh, right right now right now so TSR is basically your dividend plus your share price share return right share capital appreciation and then the board main concern is that divisional manager is not being properly assessed by divisional performance measures used so now want to consider other measures of divisional performance 
they want to do residual income and EVA okay we need to have two measures two different measures firstly they have asked you to evaluate the divisional performance at THK so we need to evaluate all right next thing we need to discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance okay a colleague has collected the data which will allow calculations of ROI RI and EVA this is shown in appendix 1 fine fine that can be done easily right similarly the service division information so in addition to the divisional performance measures the board want to consider the position of service division the standard cost within the service divisions are shown in appendix 2 position of service right currently the service division does two types of work they are repair which is covered by warranty and repair outside warranty so one number and then there is the second one as well all right the service division is paid by customer for out of warranty repairs so the repair division is the, rep the service division is generated by The service division is paid by the customer for the out of warranty repairs okay under the warranty guarantee and warranty generate an annual fee of annual fee of 10 million which is a recharge from MNS division okay repairs under warranty it generates annual fee of 10 million which is recharge from MNS division right the company sells 444,000 units per year in the past 9% would have needed a repair within the three years warranty so there is a 9% defective rate the parts are charged by MNS division to the service division right so they charge how much $75 per repair okay they charge that much the repair takes two hours on average the board wants to ensure that they have an effective transfer pricing system and have asked you to outline the criteria for designing transfer price system All right amendment to the transfer pricing system the board are considering amending the existing dollar 10 million internal recharge agreement between mns and service there have been some discussion of tailoring one of the two transfer pricing approach that is market price or cost plus All right so to meet the company's objective right we can talk about both of them another thing is although the service division has the capacity to cover all of the existing work available it could outsource the warranty service work okay mm, the service division has the capacity it has the capacity to cover all the existing work available it could outsource right could outsource as it is usually straightforward it would retain out of warranty it would what it would retain out of warranty work as there is a higher margin business okay it would then look for other opportunities to earn revenue using its engineering experience a local engineering firm has quoted a flat price of $200 per warranty service. 
per warranty service right now it's what $75 per repair right which is being charged $200 per service warranty repair provided that they obtain a contract for all of the repairs from GHK okay has evaluate to has asked us to evaluate the two methods discussed of calculating capacity transfer price between this and this and then appropriate calculations should be performed okay what about the new information system so they want us to evaluate potential impact of introduction of new performance uh, information system on performance management finally you have been asked to describe the types of external information which the new system should seek to capture right what kind of data should be captured so right now what's the new information system the board has also con uh, are also considering a change in information system at GHK the existing systems are based on individual functions so such as production sales service finance and human resources right so they are implementing a new system which is more integrated and there is a single database so right now there is a lot of problem right with uh, accurate information compatibility issue right real-time input right so single database right so which is accessible at any of the company's five sites okay at any of the five sites and the company network would be upgraded to allow real-time input and update of the database the database would support a detailed management information system and a high-level executive information system okay so they would need for high-level executive information system they would need external data about what the market conditions as well right conditions and all right so so many external information can be there so let's look at the model solution Key answering tips for this particular question is that you need to focus on divisional performance measures and their relative strengths and weakness. Try to uh, include a discussion of the different profit figures that would be used and issues such as controllable and versus uncontrollable cost. Okay. Okay. Next thing is ensure you back up your commentary with adequate supporting calculations. Okay. Make sure you make specific comments on the impact of the new system, not the specific difficulties in initial implementation of the system. So impact of the new system, right? Not the difficulties. So finance director and performance expert and we need to talk about divisional issues at JHK and introduction of new information system. All right. So the f f report examines uh, divisional issues it begins by evaluating our performance and offering a general consideration for different measures of perform divisional performance the nature of the transfer price and suitable methods of transfer price uh, seeing that uh, the work of the TV service division back to the main manufacturing and sales divisions are reviewed finally the impact of the unified corporate database and improved uh, information system is considered so that's this is just introduction intro okay let's look at divisional performance okay so let's look at evaluate the division so first of all we need to firstly we need to evaluate the divisional performance and then discuss the proposed measures so let's evaluate the performance first of all so we've been given revenue right so for even for evaluation evaluation um, for calculation of ROI RI and EVA appendix 1 can be used 
right for calculating eva we need p a t right so we need operating profit should be there so what's the information that we've been provided we've been provided with the profit before tax right so what's the return return on we can calculate ROI first of all right ROI is basically nothing else but controllable ROI is basically nothing else but operating profit right operating profit it's right over here 386 divide by 1294 all right so 386 divide by 1294 so 30 percent right 30 percent to to calculate that uh, we can calculate residual income as well similarly which is basically nothing else but operating profit minus your notional interest right so what's the operating profit 386 right what's the notional cost of capital is basically is 1294 times 9% 116 minus 386 what the hell what kind of result am I getting 386 minus 116 270 right so that's for residual income right for uh, calculating no pat right for eva we need no pet and then we subtract to whack minus your cost of capital uh, right so ho, ho, ho. that's kd that's your ke cost of equity that's your kd that's your tax rate right so in order to calculate uh, that we need pbt right profit before tax we can calculate based on that as well Operating profit PBT and then we add in the other expenses which is what other non cash expense is 8 right so we are assuming that the depreciation is same okay so we are assuming that uh, depreciation economic and normal distribution is uh, normal uh, depreciation is same and then we subtract the tax from it right uh, the tax figure is subtracted from it so always remember that remember that you need to calculate tax as well whenever you are using pbt figure right because tax calculation has not been done normally you are doing what pat and then you add back all these figures and then you subtract and you add back the interest component of it and then you adjust the tax for the tax savings that was lost as a result of that interest right so you normally do that this is a little bit different so all you need to do is just compute tax as well right and then after that and then after that so your thing is 386 times 0 0.3 so 386 times 0 0.3 will give us tax of 116 right and then your no pat will be 274 similarly you can calculate for the other one and then now what we have we have a no pat so for WAC what we can do we can simply use notional interest rate right we can simply use notional interest rate so eva is what whack minus capital employed right so that will be 274 minus your 
whack is what 9 percent 0.9 my times how much is the other thing capital 1294 one two nine four times zero point nine one one six four mm, zero point zero nine one two nine four times zero point zero nine uh, minus two seventy four one fifty eight right so all you need to do is you can use the notional interest rate because we don't know what the capital structure is right next thing both the divisions are performing well right as per so there is a as per roi is this much in terms of value creation both are healthy return on investment there is no target rate which to compare them but both divisions have made up positive residual income and economic value added which again implies healthy returns right similarly the divisional performance measures uh, right what do we need to do next is we need to uh, they have asked you to evaluate the divisional performance at JSK and critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance okay so we just need to talk about positives and negatives right the appropriate ROI is calculated appropriate return on is calculated uh, before interest and tax divided by capital employed at that division the profit figure excludes allocated head office cost right it excludes the apportioned head office cost as these are not controllable at divisional level right the residual income takes the same profit figure and then it simply subtracts the notional interest charge based on capital employed both divisions are offering good returns with positive ri and high controllable roi although there would be there would normally be target roi right normally set in order in order to compare the actual performance the target would have to exceed the nine percent cost of capital right it would have to exceed that cost of capital right as it does not take account of necessary head office costs right roi is simple and commonly used measure of divisional performance however it can encourage divisions to delay investments in new assets right so same as roce since this measure improves assets are depreciated with ease right this measure automatically improves because every year your depreciation is getting less right and roi ri offers a return on investment or residual income offers the possibility of applying different cost of capital to division with different tricks profile right so it offers different cost of capital right to divisions with different risks profile it offers us that ability right based on different risk as per because what you're doing is you have your operating profit and you are charging less your notional interest charge right so you could apply different rates as per their risk profile right that's what this point basically means okay and both roi and ri have the disadvantage of being based on profit measures of performance rather than cash right so not rather than cash what is it doing it's a profit measure right so it's on accurate basis where we where it is being uh, basically calculated so measures such as npv use cash flows right which are less subject to interpretation of accounting rules and more directly aligned with shareholders interest okay and then what else so it's unclear either of this measure is aligned with the overall performance measures of tsr right because those things they depend on what 
they depend on share price all right they depend on share price next thing that i wanted to talk about was so eva is absolute measure <coughs> sorry all right it involves more complex calculations than ri with many adjustments to accounting figures of profit and net assets right such as use of replacement cost for asset values right so they use replacement cost right because uh, dip accounting depreciation rather than uh, i mean economic depreciation rather than accounting depreciation right so uh, the calculated figures are an estimate using available information right so what happens when with this uh, absolute figure is that if the company is of a bigger size or the division is of a bigger size it may not be a very uh, suitable comparator okay it may not be very suitable comparator many of the eva adjustments they are intended to avoid distortions of result by avoid distortions of result by accounting policies that are present in ROI and RI such as depreciation there is two different policies straight line versus you are reducing right so that's even not a cash outflow right so EVA T and trademark EVA is more directly linked right EVA is more directly aligned with the objective of increasing shareholders wealth okay so it's more directly aligned so should help ensure that there is congruence between so there is a there is a goal congruence between divisional and corporate goals because it's more aligned with increasing shareholders wealth right so eva like ri has the advantage that by treating certain cost and investment it encourages ca appropriate capital expenditure right however eva also depends on historic data while shareholders will be focused on future performance unlike roi eva uh, ri would not help judge relative performance of gsk as the division are not of similar size so an absolute measure is not comparable right there boom 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 right so unlike ROI, right? ROI is a relative comparator, but EVA and RI is it's not of similar size, so the absolute major comparison is not available. And historical data, EVA is based on historical data, that's why it's not suitable. Okay, next thing, next thing, let's move on. The criteria for designing transfer pricing, right? Transfer pricing. And so okay so currently what's happening let's just reread that thing again right so currently the service divisions does two types of work those warranty which is covered by warranty those which is not right and currently the service division is paid by the customer for out of warranty while the repairs under warranty have an annual fee of 10 million which is a charge from recharge from ms division the company sells this many units right so how many units are there out of that 9 million how many how much is the cost per unit right we could just do that so 10 million and then no, oh, i mean 440,000 units right 440,000 units and parts that's costing is 75 per repair right per repair so we have to do the calculations later on later on right later on so how to ensure that there is an effective transfer pricing in place they have asked you to outline the criteria so the transfer price is a price that the service division would charge to the manufacturing division right so how much the service division would charge for the sales division manufacturing and sales division for the warranty only for the warranty servicing right 
for which it would otherwise receive not any income if it did not charge there would not be any income so the objective of transfer price system is to allow divisional management to be assessed based on divisional profit so to provide them with the motivation of retaining their autonomy right otherwise what would happen what is the motive behind creating a transfer price is to give them autonomy otherwise like it's no point like uh, getting senior management involved and then telling them what to, to do what to do right so it's a lot of things so so it should be that the transfer price system is to allow divisional management to be assessed based on the on the basis of divisional profit on the basis of divisional profit okay on the basis of divisional profit so transfer price next thing next thing price, transfer price should be set so that the decisions of divisions individually are benefit to the company as a whole but still represent a fair representation for fair position for both of the division right so it should not be that one is charging higher for the next one and then hurting the overall company but it should be fair as well to the company as a whole so if different divisions are in different tax regions then the transfer price should minimize overall company tax liability right it should minimize overall tax liability within the law within the law it should be done ethically right so the general rule for goal concurrent decision making is that transfer pricing should be set with reference to opportunity cost of sale to the selling division that is uh, the service division right how much would be the opportunity cost of sale to uh, the selling division what would be the opportunity cost to the buying division that is manufacturing right so that's how it should be decided there are different situations if there is surplus capacity or capacity constraint in service division or there are different situations right so when there is sur surplus capacity or capacity constraint right in the service division or if there is external market for the service since this affect opportunities available to the division right so all these things should be taken into consideration right this should be a criteria and uh, number three is two types of market system that they are planning to use right so i mean two types of pricing system they are planning to use is market-based pricing so in this case what's going to happen in market-based pricing is that the service division could consider an external market price since this is the opportunity to outsource and therefore managers should charge or would charge do we need calculations evaluating yeah yeah we need we need calculations as well right right so the service divisions would consider an external market since there is an opportunity cost opportunity to outsource it right and why not then therefore it manager would charge 200 right if it were to do it outside it would charge 200 this would generate or reduce divisional profit to the company of 0 0.59 from the warranty work as opposed to the profit of 2.67 right we can see the working uh, in the appendix right over here right mm, labor per repair so in appendix 2 there is a cost given right Two, there is a cost given so labor per repair is uh, 36 right 
so it would take two hours right per repair i think it takes two hours where was that it was given somewhere here mm -mm -mm. it was somewhere here repair takes two hours right that's why it's 18 times 36 okay so variable divisional over it per hour is basically it takes two hours right so that's a variable cost so that will be two that's mm, thing fixed divisional over it per hour it's 25 so that will be 50 as well parts we need to add the parts that's 75 right so variable cost will be basically 135 how is that computed 40 90 and then plus 7 right so that would be how much so 50 and then So this is 40 and then 50 and then 75 5 and then 7 uh, 9 and then 6 165 all right next thing i wanted to think was overheads are allocated by labor hours okay we already did that the parts was done so and then what else i wanted to see was uh, uh, uh. so variable cost right a variable cost per repair is computed right it comes out to be uh, 135 then your total cost is 185 right it comes out to be 185 And then out of the total repair is how much for 40,000 and then 9% is how much 39,600 right needing repair every three years every three years right and current recharge agreement is basically 10,000 and then the variable cost is five three four six right mm, right then after that your contribution will be uh, the variable cost is basically 135 times your 39,000 thing 39,600 39600 times where is that variable cost 135 right 5346 and then contribution then you have your fixed cost right Fifth fixed cost and then uh, basically what I wanted to calculate over here was fixed cost right. so fixed cost is also how much is that it's one nine eight zero right and then we get this value as well divisional profit is currently how much two six seven four right so for the variable cost I was I was trying to calculate it in a weird way you know, 75 plus 40 would give us 135 right so i was i don't know what i was thinking and how i was calculating that but it's, it's 135 right so uh, similarly in this case what you can do is basically 39600 times your variable cost is 135 right so 35346 right for that that way you'll get a contribution then after that your fixed cost will be basically what will be uh, $50, $50 per 
per per quantity okay times 39 650 times 30, uh, that will give us 1980 right 1980 4654 minus 1980 will give us 2674 right so that's the divisional profit all right and as per market pricing what's the revenue what's the market price they said that it would be two hundred dollars two hundred dollars right thirty nine six hundred times two hundred dollars six seven nine two zero right so under current uh, uh, agreement what is being done they are being quoted as uh, under current system they are being quoted 10 million dollars right so their revenue is 10 million now it's going to be 7 million uh, not even close yeah 7 million almost 8 million you can say that right so it's very cheaper in the market let's just say that the warranty and the variable cost will be same your contribution will be uh, just subtracting two of these figures right and then your fixed cost will be same right the divisional profit will be how much uh, it would only be 594 all right so if you are using cost plus approach in this so it's going to be what it's going to be 10 million and divide by things so it's going to be your cost is going to be 252 right to give equivalent contribution to the current recharge agreement right and to cover the variable cost right we would need 135 so in order to break even uh, contribution to the division it would need 185 which is basically 10 million minus 2.674 all right Ten million plus ten million minus your two point six seven four. So to give break even contribution to the division, we would need one eighty five. <coughs> okay, under current agreement, right? Under current agreement. has to be 252.53 all right okay let's just grab those numbers bring it up and let's evaluate let's evaluate under market based uh, pricing model the manager would charge 200 right and it was it would reduce the profit divisional profit by how much i think i might just uh, open this thing over here as well uh, what is this uh, company name is ghk ghk and i think it should be somewhere here right mm, right okay we have those figures and that would reduce profit by 0 0.59 million right 0 0.59 million just charging that much would reduce the profit by that much all right so as opposed to the current profit of two point six seven all right as opposed to the current profit of two point six seven so thus this would still provide motivation for the service division to take the warranty work it would still be motivational because uh, it's still profitable it's still profitable right 
even though if it is charging the market rate it is still profitable however there would be savings if the work were kept internal to gsk as the overhead of negotiating and managing the contract right uh, means that these they would save cost right so that's the main thing about transfer pricing at the end of the day right it's just the selling cost and uh, your supervision cost for that contract that would be saved right so there is also danger of outsourcing the service function in the in that the company loses control of strategically important part of its offerings to the customer very important analytical point provide it right so in the in our in our where was that question in the question it was clearly mentioned that it was clearly mentioned that the company had a loyal customer base and it had high quality machine which was backed by three years warranty right so that the warranty could be a significant uh, reason for a customer's purchase decision okay so if it is not able right if it is not able to provide that it will lose what strategically important part of its offering right so it is clear that warranty is a selling point for GSK and it may not be able to control the quality of repair work when it is outsourced okay so warranty is a selling point very important selling point so a market price will guide the service division in the right decision on whether or not on whether to continue the work in-house or whether to outsource it and free the capacity for other opportunities if the external work offers a better contribution than the warranty work the service division will automatically do external work this will measure profits at market-based prices thus this method will provide motivation without a price being imposed by head office right because they are already doing it at the market-based price the volume and profitability of the external work that may be available to the service division right should also be investigated right what's happening with that if it were to be more profitable than the internal work it would suggest that they prioritize that kind of work and outsource if there is lack of capacity to cover the internal work they can just do external work and then outsource the internal work okay so if the profits are higher in that right it should be noted that current quote from the outsourcer demands a minimum volume of work so their work may need to be repriced right so that is another analytical point that they have captured next thing is cost plus pricing right in that uh, the work would be charged on the basis of cost to the service division right so the variable cost is 175 on average per repair so the 10 million contract represents a contribution for the division of 46 uh, 54 right based on the expected 39,000 uh, repairs right so this represents a divisional profit of how much 267k 74 right this will this would represent that much profit right uh, that would be the profit for them so this work could be charged at a variable cost this work could be charged at variable cost but then there would be no contribution right if we just charge it at the variable cost it would be no co no contribution to the service division's profit so there is no incentive for the service division to do that work so they will prioritize external service sales over internal ones so if the break-even divisional profit was desired right which is a price of 185 uh, where to uh, be charged uh, right uh, to cover all the overheads fixed overheads in the division although it would contribute to the head office costs 
right it would not contribute to the head office costs service division manager would still be motivated to perform the warranty work would still be motivated right so ms division managers would accept any cost below the alternative of 200 right they would still consider it because they are getting it done so it's still less than the 200 dollars right because the contribution they need is only what 135 right so in order to break even they only need 185 so even below 200 they can go up to until 185 right 185 so it may be worth comparing a cost plus approach with the existing agreement the service division would have to charge 253 dollars per repair in order to make the same divisional profit as it enjoys under that under current agreement right so it would have to charge 253 dollars right which is not suitable for uh, which is not suitable right so the current pricing method the current pricing method provides a contribution to the divisions fixed which will incentivize the service division However, this may cause problems in quality as it is not related to the volume of the work done by service. So if there was a higher number of repairs, then the expected service division might compromise quality in order to control costs. Okay, so they might do that. Right, they might do so. Regarding the new information system, so the executive information system will bring a number of benefits right to the company so we need to analyze what the potential impact of the new information system the new information system will bring a lot of decision making at strategic level right but at certain cost and with certain problems so the benefits will relate to improved decision making and as EIS will allow detailed more detailed operational records right but the initial presentation of data should be uh, should be based on KPI for the company right so initial presentation of data should be based on KPI this system should be linked to external data sources so that senior management do not fall in the trap of looking inwards in the organization right at the risk of ignoring wider issues in the business environment next thing is the new system will increase amount of information available and analysis that it will be possible for senior managers to perform right so for uh, performance management system what it will do is for performance management uh, it will make them provide or it will help them provide or it will help them do further analysis with the help of increased data all right it will present opportunities for better decision making and more up-to-date information however it may present the information of information overload problem of information overload right that's the golden word over there so it will need to be designed to gain only access to those who are given appropriate authority right so the data used in decision making must be more robust as single database will reduce the problem of redundancy where multiple copies of the same data are held in different uh, data right this will remove the danger of inconsistency and reduce the storage required by the company next thing is eis will help support will allow access to decision support systems such as large spreadsheet models 
built in order to pull data out of database which is used for forecasting and appraising projects for example warranty repairs forecasting is important for the current fixed contract between sales and service division right the eis will also give access to tactical information such as budgets in order to help executive control in order to gain maximum benefit of the new system executive managers will need to be trained and training will need to occur just before the new system is available so that they are they can use it immediately right so it's a 10 marks question that's why we need to explain it overall the new system will provide valuable information if it is used correctly and cost of the system outweigh the benefit of the system which will be intangible so difficult to measure okay so we can just make that point as well next thing briefly describe the types of external information which the new system should capture so it is important that the new executive information system captures both internal and external information right so it should capture external information which includes details on competitors offerings such as machine warranty features or machine features as well as the service provided right such as extended warranty and all it would be useful to collate customer feedback or collect customer feedback about product and services offered by jsk and incorporate this information into the system to track any changes in customer requirement right so feedback loop which would help it to modify their system right next thing is they could look at the warranty repair services for other companies right so they can collect information on other services service providers in the area so it would be particularly important at this stage to understand industry pricing to ensure that the prices offered by the local engineering company remains competitive all right so this would combine with the information regarding cost of performing this service right so they could analyze for any variance whether it's uh, good to do it in-house or externally in conclusion uh, of the report uh, the two divisional uh, performance measures do not align with the overall corporate strategy it is recommended that the company use eva as an appropriate measure of performance because we were suggesting R ROI and then RI right residential uh, no residual income so even that is also not a direct measure whereas our objective is what maximization of shareholders right so the current method of transfer pricing gives a good contribution to the fixed cost in the service division but may not encourage both divisions to perform optimally from the perspective of whole company further work needs to be undertaken in order to investigate the possibility of additional streams of outside revenue for the service division so there is a scope for that so that's pretty much it how we answer this particular question i hope i did clarify some of your doubts that's it for this video take care bye bye